Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anjani Achanta. I am a consultant nephrologist at Renova Hospital, Sanatnagar. So, I will tell you what can be done for slowing your progression of kidney disease. So, first and foremost important thing is control of hypertension. That is very important because we do everything except uh, we don't try to control our hypertension thinking it's normal or somewhere around 140, 150 and we leave it like that. It's not so. So, your hypertension control plays a major important factor in your progression of kidney disease. That means your serum creatinine value, if it is less than 2, to progress to 6 or 7, to reach an end stage renal disease, hypertension may plays a very important role. So, of this hypertension, what is the level which we have to use? So, the most important thing is you should restrict sodium in your diet. This is important not only for progression of kidney disease, but also for control of your hypertension. So, less sodium in your, in your diet, less sodium is absorbed into your body, less sodium uh, causes less uh, hypertension. So, the easiest way to control hypertension is restrict sodium in your diet. And what is the goal? This is very important. Usually, normal blood pressure is considered to be 140-80. So, it's very important to control your hypertension. So, any patient who is passing even minimal protein, it's very important to keep your blood pressure below normal. That is between 130 to 80. And if you are having either headaches or strokes, it is very important to keep your blood pressure at a lower level. Second important thing is limit protein intake. This is very important because as I said, carbohydrates and fats are usually metabolized to CO2 and water which is excreted by your lungs. But proteins are usually metabolized to non-volatile acids that is which cannot be excreted through lungs which are not volatile. So it has to be excreted through the kidney. And if you limit your protein intake, you are produ uh, producing a lesser load on your kidneys thereby lesser waste products for the kidneys to excrete. It's just like a failing machine. If a machine is failing, you don't try to put more load in because it will fail faster. So we try to put lesser load so that it fails slowly. So as a result, we have to limit protein intake. But limiting protein intake can also cause malnutrition in some patients, especially in advanced kidney disease when they are not able to take adequate food. So by also limiting the protein amount, we, we may predispose them to malnutrition. And uh, this might cause other diseases and cardiovascular diseases also. So it's very important to take limited protein in intake for every patient with kidney disease. So the average which is given is 0.8 gram per kg per day. But uh, the best way to achieve this is to take egg whites. That is the best form of the protein which is available. And uh, followed by you can even take chicken or fish. Fish is usually preferable. But avoid red meat, especially muttons. Because they are high in non-volatile acids and they produce more load on their kidney. The next important thing is sodium restriction in your diet. So, usually this depends upon your advanced kidney disease. How much sodium should you take? So that your blood pressure is under control. You do not develop any swellings of your feet. You do not develop any swellings of your face. So, this is the optimum sodium level for each patient. It depends upon each patient because some might be taking good sodium but they still have very low blood pressure. So it varies with individual patient. But overall, you should rec restrict your sodium to less than 10 grams per day in your diet. So this is very important. Um, for patients with advanced kidney disease, it is better to restrict your sodium to 2 to 4 grams in your diet per day. And uh, for those who are on dialysis or who are undergoing other form of therapies, it is better to keep your sodium to less than 2 grams per day. Next important thing is reduction in weight. Obesity is a major factor because it will increase your diabetes, it will increase your hypertension, it will increase the filtration capacity of the kidney thereby increasing more load. So it's very important to maintain an optimum BMI between 22 to 25. So usually in advanced kidney disease because of decreased appetite, patients trend to lose weight. But that is not considered as a healthy weight loss because their majority of the patients lose protein in their diet. So Achieving an optimum BMI with the help of good amount of carbohydrate, fat and protein is very important rather than just starving yourself and bringing that to the same BMI because the metabolism of the body is changed when you starve yourself. So that is not needed. Next is treat hyperuricemia. Hyperuricemia, uric acid levels, they are very high in kidney disease and in any patient with diabetes. So these tend to increase your glucose levels, these tend to increase your blood pressure levels. So with medication and avoiding any purine rich diets, we can try to control hyperglycemia, hyperuricemia. 
as i said optimum glucose control especially in the early years of diabetes before you develop any kidney disease that is very important because once uh, kidney disease develops even though we try to control optimum uh, blood glucose with medication and everything first you have medication side effects will be more second is this optimum glucose control will slow your progression but it will not prevent so it's very important in early stages to have early stages of diabetes to have an optimum glucose control smoking session is very important because smoking affects your arteries it predisposes you to heart disease it predisposes you to brain strokes and also to kidney disease hence smoking cessation is very important serum phosphorylase levels this is very important because once your kidney failure starts serum phosphorylase levels are very high and uh, as a result pth hormone which is a parathyroid hormone levels are very high high levels of parathyroid hormones they tend to affect your heart they tend to affect your blood they tend to affect your bone so it's very important to control serum phosphorylase level through diet and medication and keep in check and regularly check your kidney function levels because serum phosphorylase levels if they are in the optimum level it will help you to maintain a good bone also good good bone quality also thank you so much